Hey there. So I figured something out by just fiddling around again. How to lock how to lock the the focus on here and the lighting settings. Because that was something that was bothering me. And now I think I've you know just trying stuff and somehow it worked. Um because otherwise it's just con continuously trying to focus. Here, this is my backpack. Outside it's sunny and blue sky. And this will be, I think, the last drawing because I said so. I had the feeling there were only two more and now I have one image left. So I'm not quite sure what will happen right now. <clears throat> but you see, like, it smells really nice and clean in here for the first time in weeks i have cleaned my room i simply had no energy to spare on cleaning anything and right now it feels good to be in here again but also a bit in a way i'm a bit afraid that i will also you know <laughs> lose my strength but the thing is, you know, I don't also really feel like it was that bad. I have been in worse places and right now it also feels like I was in the same place. But I somehow managed to deal with it in a different way. And I think that's all I can ask right now. Because now I'm in the last couple of meters. So... Today is the 3rd of May <clears throat> and I just continue to record videos and I know I will do so, so in nature and probably some I will record also in here because now I feel good to be in here again and that's just something which I didn't feel like for a while. Um, yeah, so the drawing I made earlier somehow gave me some sort of trouble because well I don't know, somehow like I said, I'm not over the hill yet. So I need to continue to work, I think. And I mean, that's just the general state that I seem to be in. It's just to continue to work. <coughs> And that is then the trouble. See some shapes, I already did that once. And sometimes you come back to doing it. And that's why I also decided to to go into the same place later. At least that's what I feel like now. And it's still a mystery whether I'm going to go there or not. And just now, I think I 
I think it's just the way of continuing to do things in new ways. Because anything else it just doesn't work. And that's just roughly what I feel like I'm doing at the moment to just continue to just continue to continue to continue right Continue. Like with tongues, for example, I feel like it's quite hard to to draw them. Like So see, sometimes I don't like what I'm doing. I mean, this is maybe how I feel right now. Like there's some kind of separation in my life. It can be considered an illusion, but well, what if it isn't? 
is to me it just feels really real so it's just to continue as best as you can and I know I just see all these shapes, like the dogs I was drawing earlier, you know, I just see like father and child and stuff, and then just keep hoping. But hope can be destructive if you focus on, you know, on the thing you're hoping for too much, because then you lose the moment and you're living in the future. But you don't live in the future, you live in the now. You also don't live in the past. And it's important to always remember that, like this moment right now, you don't have all the things you think you want. So you need to manage, like, what do I have? Where do I want to go? You know, how do I work with that? And suddenly, what I see, I like much better. Because suddenly I focus on, okay, right? continue and that to me like some of the essential lessons from my spiritual path is to always continue always continue 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 make mistakes and learn from them and that's why for instance I gave up on trying to work with my dad or help my dad and the reason is because he doesn't allow others to make mistakes but he can make them. And that's why I decide then I don't want to work with you anymore because you know, you allow yourself to make mistakes, but I can't make them. And that just puts a lot of pressure on me because in the end, he's going to, you know, blame me for something. So I rather let him make his own mistakes. So that seems to be okay for him. And see, there is, of course, once more, I'm getting back to this trouble of having a relationship and, you know, being worried that your partner sleeps with somebody else. If you worry about it too much, it may actually happen because by the time, you know, they might open up to you again, you're so convinced that they cheated on you that you're just going to shout at them and send them away. Because you, you never realized that it was just your fear you were listening to. It was some kind of demon you were listening to. And the truth was actually maybe that she was faithful. And that she just waited to come back together with you. And then imagine she does and you send her away again. Well, she will never come back anymore. So, you know, don't listen to all these voices you always hear. Because if they're torturing you, then it's probably you're just in hell right now. So just remember that and keep focusing on your goal and don't let them distract you. Because now I could have gotten, you know, I could have fed my anger towards her or to anyone who ever cheated on me. I could have, you know, trying to run after her. I could have tried to stop doing what I'm doing because, you know, until now nobody really... Now, it's the feeling I have acknowledges what I'm doing here. So it's my impatience. You know, I could nourish that. I can feed that. Or I just continue to work and hold in me the belief that it's going to work out. I just have to continue. And that's then what you do. You just continue to produce videos, although until now nobody's really watching them. And although you keep checking your YouTube channel and it says no views, you know, after 13 hours of publication and that can be highly frustrating of course with anything that you're doing whether it is you're writing books or selling stuff art whatever it will take a while and it will take a lot of trust and faith and perseverance and that's once more the point not everybody manages to work themselves out of hell because they are depending on others too much and they don't maybe they don't really like what they're doing 
And that's what I always have to remind myself. I really like this. I look at these kind of characters. I don't know where they came from. Right, they're just there. But somehow they look a bit happy. And you know, that's for me all that I need to know about it, right? And why should I worry so much about whether or not other people like what I'm doing, if I can like what I'm doing. And that's just so much more important, because that's when you keep producing great stuff, because you, you like it, and you love it. And it's not really important to understand all the details. The only thing that really matters is, you know, do you have the balls to continue Or do you allow the universe to beat you? I mean, what does that mean? I mean, in the end, it's not the universe, right? It's yourself. Because you were listening to the wrong people. And you were looking at the wrong people. Because if you keep looking at the people that don't succeed, well then, maybe you're not going to succeed either. So instead, I'm just looking at the people that succeeded. But I also look at, okay, do I like the way they got there? Does it feel like, you know, this is something I want to do? Like, how did they get there? How did they get there? I mean, like, for me, it's always the example of the certified health nut. Like, I like what he did, but I also have the feeling a bit he lost himself. You know, that's for me to say, but it's just how I see it because if you lose yourself in this the certified health nut and you try to be always more crazy and more crazy then you're going to lose yourself so spiritual advice from a barbarian lunatic it has its dark sides but also its light sides just like me so if i lose myself too much in the darkness because for instance some of my art is quite dark and some of my books are quite dark because the topics I talk about are quite dark, because some of spirituality is quite dark. But that's just, I mean, nobody wants to buy that everything's light shit. Nobody wants that, because you cannot take that seriously. It's just like, oh, you know, I love everything. I love creation. I love the world, you know. But that's not true. Nobody believes that. It's just the people that are afraid of their own darkness, and then they run around like, fairies or something, but that's not real, that's not them, just a part of them, and life will snuff them out like a candle in a storm, because they weren't prepared for it, like, you can't just be light, you always have yin and yang, and that's what You, of course, then have to remember because if you're trying to fight and resist your own darkness, you know, the stuff that makes you obese, right? That's your darkness. The stuff that makes you smoke, that's your darkness. The stuff that gives you images of killing other people, that make, that's your darkness. You know, horror movies to enjoy splatter, that's your darkness. 
And maybe you feed that too much, and then you forget the light. So it's a balance, you know, this kind of dangerous side in you. That's, that's the thing that allows you to go into the forest and challenge yourself and say, hell yeah, I'm pulling through, right? And that's this kind of the warrior mentality that I seem to have. You know, that's also what brought me through my studies that I said, no, I'm not going to be beaten by my own laziness. So, yeah, I just wanted to chill always. It's very true. But, you know, what I wanted more than to chill was to succeed. And to follow my path, and I have done so. And I have a feeling ever since I decided to go and study environmental protection, right, I didn't know why I did that. But there was a part of me that absolutely knew what he was doing. And that part is the part that I then honed and refined and made sure to feed the wrong parts because I realized some of the parts, you know, they're quite destructive and some of the parts destroy the kind of relationships that I was trying to have. And the more I tried to be with women, And the more I tried to have my own family, I realized, shit, there is so much stuff in me that I have to look at. If I want to be happy and I want to live a different life than my parents, which is why, yes, for me, living here is my own personal hell. Because I'm stuck here with nowhere to go, no financial, like, no. You know, financial freedom, you could say. You know, but that's why I'm working, because I said I want to change that. But in the only way that I know how and that I can, which is... Right, like this. And... That, of course, is incredibly hard. Especially if you don't have somebody, you know, I don't know anybody who managed to do that. Apart from sometimes people you see on the internet. And that's then, of course, the people I took as an example, you know, what happened? They had sometimes some kind of depression and then they started to be creative. Like often they were quite addictive, uh, addicted. And then they started to just do stuff on YouTube. And they persisted in doing it. And suddenly people liked it. So, you know, then you think, you know, why should it work for me, right? It just worked for them because they're special. But then you realize, hey, I'm special too. And maybe this is something I want to do. And you don't know where it's going to get you, right? I mean, I can say I'm a kind of a genius. And I think, you know, when I started doing this, I knew that this would turn me into some kind of celebrity or famous person or like, you know, well-known creator. I kind of knew that. Yes, that's absolutely true. But then, of course, I had my doubts. And even now, right, I'm just talking like it already happened, but I don't talk to people about this. So if people ask me questions about, you know, how are your statistics, I usually don't really answer them. I say stuff like, well, at the moment, it's still a bit reserved because it is, because people don't know what to do with me yet. And it takes time for this to develop. So that means you just believe in yourself. 
And you just continue, you continue, 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 because you believe that it's going to work out. Because I have thought about this for hours, right? How to do it. And then I've looked at people that did it. So, right, if you want to be a famous musician, you know, or whatever, you know, what you have to realize is it's not about doing what the other person did. Because what the other person did, it's just doing it. Tash Sultana, for example, she just did it. And I think a lot of it also started, I don't know, when she became really famous, but I think she was also depressed. She was missing something in her life. She was missing love, so she starts making music. But then the problem, of course, comes. You start standing on stage, and then, you know, you fall back because suddenly you need these people to cheer you on and then you're alone at home and you're making your art and suddenly it's not enough anymore because now you've become a rock star. So, you know, you lost yourself again. So that's why you have to keep making the art you're making for yourself. And maybe then it's, it's a better thing, you know, instead of you make one song that makes you feel good. You know, you always make new songs. You never do the same thing again because your audience wants it. I think that's quite an important one. Because you started off being famous because you did what you wanted. And then the audience says, oh, we like this song. Keep performing that. And that's the same with, the same with like doing pictures, right? I said that. But if I would start now creating the pictures that people like, well, then I should do probably exactly the opposite just to show to myself I can do also other stuff. And then you realize people actually like you for what you do and not for what they want. Because what they need is maybe to show to them that they're not the one in charge here. And that's what people often miss. They think because now they buy your stuff, they have a right to say something and they have a right to keep getting the same stuff you gave them once because it made them feel good and then you have to say like you know fuck you I don't give a shit the only thing I give a shit about is to do what I do and that's what I'll keep doing and if you then say you know oh you know you're not a super celebrity anymore because you don't give your audience what you want, well, then that's just not me, right? So why am I trying to be a super celebrity? Because often what these celebrities are doing, they're thinking about, you know, what could make me famous? It's that one song, for example, Macklemore did, like, you know, Thrift Shop, it was really famous. And then they try to recreate that. But it just doesn't work again. It's not, you know, you cannot recreate Thrift Shop. And that's what Eminem once said, you know, I think about My Name Is, it was one of his best songs or something. Like, you can't recreate that, because it just happened, and then people like it or not. And that's why I like it, that I have different kinds of things that I do, that I do these kind of paintings, that I write books, that I do podcasts and photography, and also YouTube. Because that gives me a lot of freedom, and I'm also aiming towards making music, you know, Every time I get stuck in a rut as an artist and I have a feeling I'm just doing the same, you know, I just change. I introduce change and I do something else. And I think that's just about the best way you can go about it. For example, eyes, you know, always making the same kind of eyes. I don't know, now I just had the feeling I want a door inside of that. Why? Because maybe we're sometimes so trapped in the stuff that we see. Right? We just look at the world and we just see what we want to see. And a good example is, you know, I've been eating pancakes the last couple of months. Quite a lot of them. And now I actually fried some potatoes. And then my mom comes in and she says, oh, have you had pancakes again? She doesn't even realize that the pan looks completely different, that there's like a spoon inside. So she just sees what she wants to see, which is 
that I eat pancakes, but I don't. Today not. So I'm not the person that other people see in me. But they just get stuck in these ideas they have of you as a son or whatever. And that's what I started to realize. People don't see me for who I am. They just see what they want to see. And if they want to see your son, yeah, if they want to see their son or if they want to see, I don't know, somebody that fail, they will see that. And then it's up to you to change that perspective for yourself at least and to distance yourself from it. And that's why living with my family was quite a challenge because I kept changing, but they don't realize it really. To them, I'm still the same guy. And to me, I'm not. While in a way I am, you know, I'm different now. I make different choices. Even though I still drink coffee, I do it in a different way. I do it more conscious. So I'm more aware also of what it does to me. And this is to me just something important that I know who I am and why I do things and how I do things. And I cannot explain that to people. So the only thing I can say is, if people are ever going to ask me why I do what I do, well, then I say I do, right? And I do because I want to show people that there's, that's all there is to it. You just do it. You know, you just start doing it because if you don't do it, you're just <laughs> doing what everybody else does, which is nothing which is just doing what they're told to do, which is eating the things that they are told that are healthy, although they're not. Working the jobs that they have been told, you know, they should work. Paying tax because they were told that they should pay tax. And they go to vote because they're being told that they have to vote. But voting any politician is already doesn't work because they're all the same and that's why in the end it's it's up to you whether you want to change or not and I just said I want to change and anyone who's holding me back will realize that it's impossible and that I will make it so unpleasant for them to stay around me if they're trying to hold me back. That some of them maybe may wish they would have never met me. And that's how determined I was. So if you come and try to stop me, you know, I might as well show you that I'm willing to destroy you if you keep trying to stop me. And that's just how it was then. And that's just how it is. And that's how it will continue to be like. So then you can just say, thank God that, you know, I realize that there is a God and that I'm part of it and that I know how it feels like to be one with it and that I can work towards creating that, you know, like permanently into my life. And with this, I think this video is going to end. But I do like uh, recording like this and I say cheers.